Texas Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. Welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, coming to you from Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Mitch, and with me, as always, is my weird... Uh, uh, you know, yeah, you know how to describe this saying from this movie. Uh, my co-host, Nate. Tacky, Mitch. Tacky. You Tacky. know me. That's, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, well, welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, where each week we take a look at a different horror movie and debate a horror-related topic with our unsuspecting victim, who's usually someone we would not call a horror fan. This week, you know, we, of course, we always have our queen of unsuspecting victims, Lisa, joining us. Lisa, how are you doing? Hey, everybody. I am, I am excited to hear your take on this movie because are you though oh boy are you? oh boy oh so boy this excited this was from a uh this was a listener request uh from someone that we we met in person uh <laughs> which yeah not didn't know they were a listener and and came up in a random conversation and you know that's practically a five-star review uh <laughs> It's like, oh, it's yeah. a real, it's a real person, not one of. You give us an in-person five-star review if you'd like. Not, not a, yeah, you know, of in course. Pa- in passing, oh. in passing, yeah. I mean, it's better than getting a one-star review in person. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> as I've been, as I've been yes. commuting more, I, I'm hearing a lot more of those in general. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, this. So this week. We are going to do uh, their request, which is a movie called Brain Damage, uh, which is uh, you will hear more about it. But from the same guy that brought you Basket Case, which I don't remember much about Basket Case. I do remember the cover art uh, at the old Blockbuster. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and we might even have a little cameo to talk about uh, in this one. But yeah. So <laughs> so Lisa had obviously never seen Brain Damage. Right. I, I think. Um, and there, I had never seen it before either. Yeah. Um, I don't think I actually had either. I, was this the first one that all three of us had, had not, was, oh, had, wow. none of us have seen? It's been a while since we've had one where that older one that none of us have seen. Usually we are, we're randomly requesting it. So, yeah, that's, and what a great film to really bring it all home. <laughs> it uh, is. I'm, I'm excited. It is something. Else. It is. It is for sure. Something. Well, we've got a lot to, uh, get into, to dissect, to really, um, really let, uh, run through our brains, uh, as we, as we talk this movie, but before we do any of that, let's have a little bit of a, a, a new, let's talk about the news actually. First eyewitness account came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. Almost incoherent. Uh, yeah. So look, we are. I mean, T minus one. What one week away from the greatest month in the year? Yes, uh, ab- absolutely. And and Lisa, I, I mean, you and I were going over just all the movies coming out. Not even just horror. Just just there's a just stupid amount of of movies coming out. Yeah. Um, there are a lot. Any of yeah. them that you're you're well, I mean, we, we kind of mentioned this last last week, but like, are there any that you're really are you getting even more excited about? You know, I think Let we went pull we, it up here. We went through a number of them. Um, I think in our last episode. Uh Venom is coming out October 1st. Venom starts Venom. off the month. Now, Nate, you I know you hate superhero movies. Are you at all going to see this not, movie? Not even. But Tom Hardy's Venom is incredible. The only thing I know is Eminem. Venom. That's all I know. I know, I know is, nothing else. 
He did a song for it. That's all. I will never know anything more than that. It's, it's, man. It's uh, even... Apparently. No, go ahead. No, sorry. I was just going to say the 45th anniversary version of Carrie is coming out in some theaters next week. Oh, interesting. There you go. Yeah. Interesting. Um, we got Adam's Family 2. Heck yes. Electric Burgaloo. For the, ki- for the, for the kiddos. Slash Electric Burgaloo. Halloween Kills, October 15th. Last night in Soho. Ghostbusters. Oh, Ghostbusters. November 19th. Ghostbusters Afterlife. For some reason, it's already telling me about the Batman that's not coming out until March. So thanks, AMC. Mm. Get your tickets now. Can you pre-order already? There's no way. No. no. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait, what? No. Get in early. It does on remind now. me. Like, at least gonna uh, you guys are like looking forward to ground. last night in Soho. Oh, yeah, we are. Last yes. night in Soho comes out on the 29th. Just right before um, Halloween. Just get right in there. Perfect. Yeah. There's a lot. There, there's Perfect. a lot. Antlers. Ooh. There's a lot Ooh. coming out. Um, I mean, I'm there's so the only one who ever remembers <laughs> antlers. No one ever. <laughs> Hi, Last week. Just did not yeah. Oh, Titan. Yeah. Now, this so, is the one we're so going to talk we about. We are going just, we're starting off. We're going a day before Titan comes out. It comes, uh, I think. The last day of September is my birthday and i think is an honorary member of october i would say yeah so nate and i i i, I, I count it i count it for that for one. nate's birthday um yeah we're going we're going to go see titane nothing nothing says happy birthday like two guys going to watch a movie about a woman having sex with a car and getting impregnated so should be fun really <laughs> you know <laughs> we could have done this again last year with any of the fast and furious films but you've refused won't do cars, no. but somehow Titan really is is. Yep, that's the one. If cars, okay, if Cars Three had won the Palm Door, would you have? Would you be going to see it? Yes. <laughs> that's that's what it would take. That's what it, that's would, what take. it would take. It would take. Oh man! Yeah. Uh, Exciting. Well, Excited about that one. That one looks. Yeah, looks that wild. one. That one is, the, a, is a fantastic fest. Which which uh you know by the time we're recording this episode and we're releasing it uh. Uh, it'll actually be the day of Fantastic Fest for the folks that are going in person. So I hope everyone who is there has a great time. We will see y'all, uh, you know, next, next year. year. Come on. God, come on. Yeah. Uh, but virtual fest coming. Did you, If you're listening, if you got virtual uh, Fantastic Fest tickets, let us know. We would love to talk about some of the ridiculous movies that are coming out. Um, and Mitch has read the synopsis. Of all of them, I'm tracking all of them. My favorite, though, it's <laughs> just tracking them. My well, because well, because so good news for some of these movies is that they're premiering at like TIFF and some other festivals, and they're getting picked up for distribution by like you know like companies like Shutter and Netflix and, and all those things. So great news for them. Bad news if you're trying to see a virtual festival because then they get removed from the block because of those distribution deals. So we've had a couple that have fallen off. Um, but we had one got added called uh Devil Story Nate, um, which yeah, is it's an older film, so I think it's this is a, a like a, a re release where they've remastered it. So, this, this I guarantee is going to be in the Nate Tyrion collection or the Natroni, whatever, like I, whatever. But, um, what was the description I told you? It's mummies, Nazi mutants, uh, stupid goddamn ghost horses, uh, and look out for that pirate <laughs> ship. What Devil, did the horses do? Who knows? They're ghost horses. What did the horses do? Yeah, Devil Story on. is a caustic, anti-human geyser of sanity-proof mayhem. Totally unique, almost totally unseen, and beamed in straight from the armpit of the 80s. French trash horror cuckoo-verse. That is... All right, Lisa, what do you think about the f- French trash horror cuckoo, cuckoo-verse? Why? <laughs> now... Why? <laughs> What I find really interesting. The people um, who write these are amazing. Like half the time we're like, I got, I got a little vinegar syndrome section yeah. uh, somewhere in here. The trash movies like previous episode, raw force, where you're just like, what is this ridiculous movie? But the people who write the descriptions are so in love with the movie. You just can't help, but get excited when you hear prose like that, describing the film. Unless you're probably Lisa, uh, but if you're me, very excited about those films. Like that that job is great. I would love to have that job. Just make the descriptions for insane films. 
It would be probably it, doesn't pay very well, but probably not. But you know what? It lives on. It, it's it's work that will survive you. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I don't. You, Maybe we need to have a, a special month around French horror films because they've had some interesting movements. And what's really funny, I think, is mm-hmm. Lisa has a a coworker, and Lisa, you can tell the story. Uh, that um, funnily enough, Nate, you and I don't have any other like in person, like day to day friends that we talked horror about with. It's really just you and me. Um, Lisa yeah, has somehow, like, as the unsuspecting victim, found a a horror loving fan. Who, I mean, t- talk about some of the movies that. Uh, oh, he loves to tell me about all this stuff and recommend stuff for the podcast. Uh, what was the latest thing that he recommended? Well, oh, if it's man, good, we'll put it on the list. Well, no, no, yeah. uh, I think it was Martyrs. Oh, no, that, that was an earlier one. That was an oh, early, yeah, this dude's re- he's real into the um, the, the French extremism. Uh, yeah films, wow which i was inside, like oh my god martyrs. i've yeah. oh yeah uh what's Irre- you put some irreversible in yo I, I tried to tell lisa about that one i'm like yeah you would not have a good You're day like irreversible. <laughs> I, or martyrs i don't think martyrs would be no those are not my kind that's of that's another either. one of those no, where like everything it was and he also recommended the eyes of my mother is that what it's called i've seen that i've seen that one yeah, he said that one's, mu- that one's much more palatable. That one's much more palatable. There was another one that he mentioned recently, but I can't remember it now. Oh. Yeah, he's just, and I'm like, mm, no, thank you. Yeah, they're not unsuspecting victim friendly. They're good movies for horror fans, but yeah. they are. Oh boy. But yeah, they're all part of that like French extremism uh, uh, sort of uh, wave of, of movies. Um, uh, yeah. Also, also, Cannes Film Festival uh, movies. Uh, Martyrs, I think, was another one of those that like people were r- walking out and fainting, or vomit. You know, like I always love <laughs> yeah. those. Like every time you hear the ones like, oh, people were just like vomiting and and passing out from from these movies. That like, sounds amazing to me. I want to. I've see that. never reacted to anything in my life that hard. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Like, I, like I don't know. I don't even remember the last time I threw up. That was non. The last time I threw up, the last time I threw up non-drinking related, I can't even ima- I can't even remember when that was. So I I can't even imagine a, f- a film doing that. Lisa, new French extremism. Are, does that sound like an exciting uh, section of horror films that you'd be interested? in? None of this sounds good. This all sounds terrible. I want to go see Adam's Family. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, Lisa, we're we're due we're due for a Lisa picks episode, so we'll have to we'll yeah, have to brainstorm it's... brainstorm those. But um, Adam's family too is actually a human centipede universe crossover, so you're not going to be. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what is, that that should be the debate question. What is wrong <laughs> with Nate? Uh, well, let us know what you think is wrong with Nate, or really, it, what movies are you mostly? Well, hold on, Mitch. There's hold on. There's one exciting piece of news that you just glossed over. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse, that excuse. I I can't even. Uh, I can't even. There's a wrestling. Oh, based thing. Oh my How god! I forgot this? that we talked about this, and then I promptly forgot about it. yes. So. F- fellow wrestling uh fans uh it's gonna i was gonna turn my mic off real quick okay <laughs> jesus uh so many of y'all may know that netflix had those interactive uh like the black mirror bandersnatch episode or the uh 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 kimmy schmidt uh you know so choose your own adventure they're doing another one just in time for halloween nate get ready it is going yeah, to be ready. Escape the Undertaker. In this movie, I'll tell you what I know. I, I, I'm not reading this from anything. I'm telling you just from what I gleaned from the trailer. And this is the actual Undertaker. The like Undertaker. Yes, person. yes. Okay, this yes, is okay. the Undertaker. In I thought his, he was retired. But he's, he's just, hey, it's like an actor. The, de- the, the dead man never retires um, from making. He's from, retired from, like 10 he, times. You never retire from cashing a check. The point is, is that uh, <laughs> for some reason, the New Day... Uh, who was one of Lisa's favorite uh, of res- wrestling groups? Uh, <laughs> Nate, I assume you'd be who's, a New Day fan as well. Who's the New Day? Describe who this is. Uh, it's, it's a tag team group. Yep. 
Uh, it's three Got guys. It. Three guys. Co- Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E, who's Big E's now the champion, heavyweight champion. Um, uh, Xavier Woods has a, a video game podcast channel called Up, Up, Down, Down. Um, I have heard of this person. I saw he was a guest on another podcast I listened to. And yeah, and really I cool think person. he's been like trying to like be like uh, like a host on like GSN or something. Like he's real big into like video game stuff. But he's also, I mean, wrestling is kind of where they where they definitely got their start. And so they're a they're okay. A I'm in. I'm in, they're a I'm in on this a little bit. They're tag team group. On this, they're all about the power of positivity. Um, there's a whole it. there's a okay. there's a whole storyline around their 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 character arc, which I know you don't care about, but for whatever reason. And there's no good reason. They need to steal the Undertaker's urn. Now, Nate, you watched a little bit of wrestling. You remember the Undertaker's urn is the source of his powers. You remember Paul? I did. You I, remember his manager, Paul Bearer? The guy who looked like he was wearing like all of the makeup that ever existed on his Yes. Face. Well, he, he has so pale. Yes. Well, the 80s, a lot of cocaine. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was cocaine. <laughs> that was it, face. Uh, <laughs> it was just, he just popped his head wow. right into a whole mound of cocaine wow. right before he walked That's out. That's more expensive. More expensive. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing. But yeah, you're. It's an interactive episode, Nate. You're going to get to choose. Do you go? Do you follow the fog? Do you follow the creepy Undertaker voices? You're do basically trying to help. Driven. Well, uh, you know, some. I mean, come on, it's got to happen. I, I don't know. I don't want to be in the first person view of that though. Uh, a lot of crotch. A lot of crotch. A lot of a lot of dead man crotch. Um, look, we all know. We all know <laughs> that I am absolutely watching this. Will I live stream it? Maybe. Maybe. I. <laughs> yeah, I you are so excited. Is, is do this? I, is what this, do I do with this? Is this, this is crazy. the start of the Mitch the Witch Twitch account? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first thing we put on the Mitch the Boy? It exists. I well, don't remember what the password is. No. Do, but do we can make it work? Do I it. do it? And people direct me directing the new day. Is it how many walls are we breaking? Nate, Lisa, I want to know your thoughts about this. Are you how are, on a scale of one to ten, ten being uh I I need a new change of pants, and one being out of my mind excited how excited are y'all for this <laughs> i'm 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 just happy for you <laughs> i mean like whatever i am excited it's just like a third of i mean i'll thing. end up doing it with you so there you go nice oh, there's gotta be like yeah. five endings or ten ending or you gotta get all of them you know like, but I, the, I mean, the good thing about this is i like the new day and i like the undertaker so it'll probably be fine i this just is yeah I just hope there's multiple different versions where like, depending if you go down a certain path, you see like Undertaker's like hair piece is different or something, you know, <laughs> like his way, like uh, he's like the, whatever spray paint he's using to keep his hair like, you know, colored is like different shades of black at different points. I don't know. It's I told my brother and my brother, you know, uh, he's he's a big wrestling fan as well. And he he literally just sent me back a meme that's that is the dude saying, What is you doing, baby? <laughs> so this is it's gonna be terrible. I invite you, Mitch the Witch on Twitch. Uh <laughs> thank you for sending that up, Nate. Look, uh yeah, so well, I don't know what the release date is. Uh I'm looking now. It's October 5th. I even I. I oh, my I, God. Isn't. Oh, I'm I'm not my I'm not ready. Two weeks isn't two. Weeks. I am not ready, but I will get there. Uh, with that said, great segue. Uh, you're not ready for this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, we're going to talk about this week's movie of the week. Brain damage. It's funny. One night you go to bed. And when you wake up, everything is different. Now Brian's acting a little peculiar. He's like a completely different person. I don't even know him anymore. Something's gotten into him. Sometimes everything glows with a different kind of light. Deep into him. What are you telling me? That we killed someone last night? Something bad. Brian, something slimy. What are you doing? Something very. I know something's happened to you. Very. How is that? Hungry. <laughs> you can't keep killing people every time you're hungry. You're 
your mind now, Brian. I own you. Gotta get out of here fast. Go where? You're a wreck, Brian. Leave me alone! Whenever you want to stop hurting, you come to me. Brain damage. It will turn you inside out. God. I just... Great trailer. Um... Lisa, elevator pitch. What is brain damage? No, ele- no, elevator pitch this. What? <laughs> I don't even. This weird <laughs> snake thing. This zombie snake thing, brain eating snake thing. I don't know. It's Here. weird. I, I, I got you. I got you, Lisa. This, here's the elevator pitch for this movie. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, that's that it. Is, right there. That is, that is what this movie over. is about. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Rick James said it best. <laughs> Great. Look, drug juice is a hell of a drug. Oh, my God. Nate, what can you tell us about brain damage? Brain damage, the incredible 1988 film um, from... Frank Henenlotter, uh, who uh, listeners will remember from classic films such as Basket Case, which I, I had seen. So I'd seen Basket Case uh, a while ago, I need, future episode, most likely, uh, with the cameo in this movie. Uh, Brain Damage, Basket Case 2, Frankenhooker, Basket Case 3, um, and then uh, a bunch of documentaries. What were the documentary subjects, Lisa? You might ask. Good question. Herschel Gordon Lewis documentary. Um, a documentary called That's Sexploitation! <laughs> Exclamation point. Which he co-directed. And Boiled Angels, The Trial of Mike Diana. One of the only people, artists, ever put in jail for his original work. He was made very lewd comics. This guy's got a very specific sleazy... Uh, sleazy art lane and he's in it he's in it and he's in it so now he's he not only made movies now he's documenting the whole the whole history of of that kind of lane so one of the more consistent filmmakers uh of all time um fair <laughs> that's not fair very fair <laughs> yeah um the lead in this film was rick hurst you might remember him from General Hospital, Guiding Light, or The Young and the Restless. That's right. He was in all three. No, Nate, you and I were Days of Our Lives. Uh, we were Days of Our Lives fans, but unfortunately, um, I did not. I, I mean, to be fair, he was only in 106 episodes of Days of Our Lives. Oh, boom. That's, that's right. That's based. I mean, that's, that's a month. <laughs> that was his that was his next job after brain damage, was being in 106 episodes of Days of Our Lives. So... This would not have been the Marlena <laughs> turns into uh turns into uh demons. It was too early. So, yeah, it was it was 8990. Um and no one else acted in this did anything else. <laughs> uh so there's that. Uh the film, the budget on this one is unknown, but I'm just gonna spoil it and say it's very low. <laughs> yeah. It's low. It's a low. It's a low budget movie. Not as low as uh, Basket Case's first movie, but very low budget, including the CGI of which is just absolutely comically hilarious. Looks like you mean you didn't love that CGI water in his bedroom? That was incredibly bad. Like blue Kool Aid, just like getting poured into a corner. I don't. Incredible. You got about nineteen seventy five level visual effects happening when he's high. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, it was awesome. Um, there is uh, for you Blu-ray fans, there is an excellent, uh, arrow video release of brain damage on Blu-ray, uh, with a lot of good features that is now on my black Friday list. So <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. Um, I guess, I, I guess um, we got to go through the uh, the tagline. Um, the movie, the movie that will <laughs> Sorry, blow your gotta, mind. I love it. You, we got to, we got to go. Through we got to go through the tagline. The movie that will blow your mind. It's a headache from hell. 
Uh, heads up, Elmer's here. There's a lot of bad Elmer. I'm just gonna stop. They're so, they're so <laughs> terrible. They're so terrible. Uh, yeah, there's heads up and then hang on to your hat. No one in this movie has a hat at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, um, yes. So yeah, there is. Uh, there's that. There's there's more, but I'll I'll go through as we're talking. Sure. Uh, um, just again, bit. more. IMDb will tell you more like this. Obviously, the basket case movies. It's gonna sh- mm-hmm. be that fans of of Maniac might like this. Uh, from Beyond. Uh, or Nate beyond. Nate's uh favorite masterpiece, Frankenhooker. Um, I've never seen Frankenhooker, this is, I, but I'm going to now. Lisa, right. based on, I mean, we're going to get into, we're going to not diverge too much, but just based on the name Frankenhooker, what do you, are what you, you are, yeah. Someone builds a hooker? That is effectively correct. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, look, assuming Lisa gets, <laughs> assume, I'm all not, right. I'm not going to, here, we're going to play a new game, I think, this week. I'm not going to tell Lisa what the level is, but based on her score, if she gives if she gives the final cut for this movie a certain score, Frankenhooker gets added to the list. No, right. Mitchell. <laughs> hey, put it put it in put it in no. the chat to just me, and then I can I'll be the fair arbiter here. <laughs> there we go. I will all say right, this, right. Lisa. Think about it this way. This is IMDb's highest rated movie from this guy. So take that however, <laughs> yeah. however you'd like. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. So this, I mean, uh, yeah. I, 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 okay, I'll at least kick off with just my my general thoughts. I actually really, uh, this movie's weird as hell, but I actually kind of liked it. Um, I, this is absolutely 80s camp. Just glorious stupidity. Like, Bad, like just bad in in bad in ways that have aged in such a way that they're great. Um, you know, this is probably a movie I would have liked when it came out, but it's just even now it's 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 fantastic. And, and look, you're just you're not gonna see a movie like this for better or worse anymore. No, you're not. You're not. Um, Lisa, what what were your overall thoughts about this one? <sighs> I just maybe we need to have a sliding scale now of how many times I sigh while I'm talking about a movie. <laughs> we'll just make that how my many, rating. How this, many this, seems, this seems like it's gonna be in the higher end, I think, uh, compared to other movies. Maybe it was so weird. It just didn't make any sense. I just it was so weird. I don't even know. And I was telling Mitch. Did they have to keep screaming the whole movie? Like <laughs> everyone who screamed screamed for like five minutes straight, and not yep. just one character, every character. I was like, "Why yep. are these people so loud?" <sighs> it was. It was. I don't it, know. was it was uh, very influential to Velocipaster previous episode. Yeah, where everyone screamed even longer than that. No. Yeah, there's there's even one, lo- way actually way longer, Lisa. Which, if you believe it, yeah, there's one lady who's who literally is hired just just to scream yep. for about three hundred minutes. It felt like. <laughs> um, okay. Oh yeah. Well, I, I forgot to mention the movie's a tight eighty four minutes. So, her screaming oh, felt, like, felt like longer. Uh, this is this is a perfect eighty minute movie. This is perfect. This is exactly how long this movie should be. And I, again, we were all—I think we're all on record saying movies need to be shorter, right? Yeah. Are we all? We're all in agreement on this. I, th- I think. I think. Um, I think so, right? I mean. So yeah, I mean, yeah. This is this is perfect. This is this is look. If you don't like it, it's over. I mean, uh, so you got by, that going for you. By comparison, not that these movies are in in any way related, but the new uh, No Time to Die, the 007 movie, is like just under three hours, and yeah, I fucking ridiculous. I, I just don't know how I'm gonna do that. I just, I'm Ridic- just ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. Like I, I just haven't watched Blade Runner twenty forty nine because I know it's like it's gonna be that's an investment. <laughs> that is, yeah, you can borrow it. It's like right here. <laughs> I'm good. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> like I'd have to borrow it for a week to get through it, and like 
At least that's, that was a good thing about the um, the Snyder cut. They had like chapters you could pause. Anyway, that was the good thing. You know the you know the good thing. I can't even watch Blade Runner twenty four nine, but let me watch like a seventeen hour cut of a movie. It's like <laughs> four television series. Yeah, but yeah. So yes, sure. an eighty four minute film significantly better. I can I can I I can squeeze all those in. Um, so let's talk about some of these characters. So I mean, certainly there is. So we certainly have our main character, uh, Brian, uh, you know, not to be confused with brain. <laughs> this, this, look, this movie, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, this movie's not, this movie is not it's at all so hiding good. what it's about. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so good. Hey, did you know that the juice could be? A stand in. I really wonder, like, do you, drugs. Did you know that? Mm, I, did you know that? I really think he thought like people weren't going to get this. <laughs> so he really like had to like real like I I do I do think some of this is like I'm gonna call him. It's brain damage. I'm gonna call him Brian though. <laughs> but just you know, just, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Like I don't find. I don't think it's done from a, a laziness. I feel like it's like I just want people to understand what this creature is doing. Um, I mean, you have Brian. You have his brother. I I think Mike. Um, his his girlfriend Barbara, and then some some bizarre ass neighbors, and that's really it. Besides, uh, uh. What is it? Almer, Elmer, Aylmer, Aylmer. A- it's not Elmer. You fucking named it Elmer. No, e- not E L M E R, A Y L E M R. But don't worry, you know I know it's that. It's an old. Because, it's an old word. Okay, it's been what was it, Roman Greek time. No, it was English, old English for being in like old a, English. Awe. Yeah, being in awe. <laughs> um, I know the spelling because the character spelled it in the movie and that is the kind of awesomeness that we're talking about here yeah really re- again really want to make sure the audience understands and is there for the duration of the journey um this uh, these characters are are just the brother's the worst like i mean that is the like just straight stone-faced acting i haven't seen in it Quite was r- it was room esque. He was very room esque. Room. Yeah. He was the most kind the of the girl. The girlfriend yeah. also uh, also was just like the acting in this is largely terrible. She uh-huh. was very she was very earnest though. Sure, right? she was er- she was at least earnest. I, I I think. I don't. Okay, maybe maybe not. Like earnest, scared, stupid, earnest, or. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest goes to Africa. Ernest, I, don't, I don't know. There's just a, a lot. Cut. She. There's just a lot of her making the same sort of intonation as uh, what's her name from Married with Children. Oh, why? Are, you know, it's just a lot of like, come on, Brian. Where? Are you? It's just not not quite like Fran Drescher. Not like that. No, level, not Fran Drescher. Like, no, no, no. But um, not as far as you'd want to be. Right. It, it, she, I mean, she. I don't know. They were such non point. I get why they're there. They're such non points. But yeah, Lisa, so. favorite favorite character in the movie. We went through all the high, no. the highlights. Brian is the most depth filled of all of them, which is incredible. Maybe or is it like the brain slug. The brain slug. <laughs> the brain Morris. slug could have had the most personality of anybody. But a- any favorite characters that you? Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Least favorite. Least favorite. All of them. The oh, screaming lady. Okay, screaming the screaming lady is definitely your least favorite. Um, yes, Martha. She drove me crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, the neighbors. I mean, it starts off real bizarre with like a tub, and they're freaking out. And you're watching more. It's just like this is the worst search in a apartment I've ever seen. Like everyone's lost like something in in your house, and th- he is just like. Just making more of a mess and knocking shit over and not like in places that like, I mean, again, you don't know what he's looking for, but even despite not knowing what he's looking for, you know, he's definitely not looking in the right place for any of it. <laughs> like he's just like looking by like the wall, like everything's eye level looking for him. Like, nope, nope, not here. Like, 
half ass looking for it while his wife's just like <laughs> screaming. Yeah. I don't know. What do y'all think? I I, I got to ask because and I, and I want Lisa to tell the story because I want her to get full credit for maybe the funniest thing I've heard her say in quite some time. It also kind of sort of kind of ruined the movie, but in a good way for me. Um, what did y'all think about Elmer's voice? Oh, boy. Uh, because the, they had to over, so what I, they had to overdub it. it they, they had to re-record the, his voice over it. So his delivery, the delivery of Elmer when he's talking is totally different. Oh. Um, because it's, it's, it's done after the fact and it's done in like a little, what I assume in, in a closet with the microphone. So then trying not to scream, um, they was the, the did in, any any anything come up about the voice? The voice was just brutal. It was like, um, in Spaceballs when the alien comes out and is doing like the show tune. <laughs> it's like what I would imagine that voice to be is this guy's voice, but like scuzzier. Everything about this movie just got like, like just like, like. There was a normal, like they, they filmed this in like a normal, like just, just like a standard apartment. And then they like painted like this a paint called grime, like on everything. And like, that's what this movie is. Everything was just a little grimy, like a little like trashy, just and that Elmer is like a trashy, um, like failed Broadway singer. Yeah. That, uh, that's how I would describe him. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> um, it, it doesn't like you would think that something that's supposed to be sort of enticing uh, Brian to to sort of stay addicted and to be be kind of tied in would have more of like a a whispery type of type of voice or something a little more. Rah, rah. Uh, Lisa, you had the best description for his voice. And I did. What did I say? I forgot. Oh, no, 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 you forgot it. it, it what a setup. It, it, it sounded like a particular character from a animated show we watch. Oh, Mr. Fish Odor. Yeah, he's Mr. Fish Odor yeah. from Bob's Burgers. So for everyone who's listening yeah. to it, because uh, isn't that Kevin who's Klein? Who's played by Kevin Klein? Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's Kevin Klein voice, voice his damn thing. <laughs> and it is once you said that, I absolutely could not unhear it, and it both ruined the movie and also made it better somehow at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Because I just I just picture Mr. Fish Odor, um, yeah, talking. Well, think think of it this way: so uh, Frank Hennen Lauder was was on cocaine, and then he stopped uh, doing cocaine, and they wrote this movie. So just keep that in mind <laughs> when all of this is happening. Wait, what? You mean this? The, you mean this movie is something more than just a leech uh, bearing into someone? No, brain it's actually it's actually and about. Leech drug leech. addiction. Oh, it's actually huh. about drug addiction. Huh. Can, can, Not slug juice. Is oh, it slug or a leech? I, I don't know. Man, I don't know. He's it's, it's slug juice on on Brian's brain. Um, it's like a weird alien penis is just like sucking on him a lot. Speaking of alien penis, let's talk about one of the more Im- fun imaginative kills in this movie. Uh, oh, so, so, okay. So the premise of this movie, again, if you haven't really, if you haven't watched it yet, um, this leech has found its way to Brian has sort of, uh, attached itself and shown Brian, like basically squirts his juice in his brain. And it like, it, I don't know. It looked, it reminded me the little, it, it sticks like this, like fork or this like needle thing right in the back of his neck. Very similar to, um, you remember the brain, the brain bug from starship troopers like that, but like a lot smaller. In fact, I almost wonder if the brain bug was stolen from this movie, as I'm saying, that I, out loud. I, I would not be surprised because the, 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 the design is actually, Oh my God. I think they did. It's afraid. <laughs> it's afraid. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Starship troopers, is the greatest movie ever. Um, No, but so, it's causing him to have euphoria. Like he sees, he's, he's, he's seeing different colors and flashing lights and he's losing time and all that. And in the process, this thing is like killing people to eat brains, just brains, not interested in anything else, just brain matter. 
incredible. Right. What a setup. What a I'm a I'm a sucker for the great setups. And this has got a great setup. Now we'll talk about some of the other kills, but you know, because the other kills are more funny than anything, but one particular kill is clearly uh just a cut above the rest. Um really yeah. he is at a club and of course he's high as hell. And he is well. Let well. Let, can we let's describe it first? Oh, of course, of course. This bug, this or this bug, parasite, whatever thing, uh, Aylmer, um, squirts blue juice into your brain. It's like the best drug of all time. Uh, and then when he does that, he he feels brains to get stronger, and then keeps giving you drugs. You get addicted. It's it's drug it's drug addiction. Blah blah blah. It has to. It has to be in water. It likes to be in water and buck in like <laughs> bathtubs and buckets, and ha- again has the voice uh, of a of a young Kevin Klein. It, it sounds sounds better than it is, but I guess when so, I mean, can you like what's the closest thing you think you've ever gotten to this this level of high? Like, uh, have you ever have you ever seen colors, Mitch? Well, I don't know, Nate. You're the one that's that's more often than I am accused of being high. So I didn't know if you, this is maybe you. You've been accused on this episode by a guest of being high. Uh, during, I have on, a, on a different episode. So. I was. I was. Um, no. Look, I'm, when you look high, when you look high, 100 percent of the time, you don't have to do any drugs. So problem Nate, I'm, solved. I'm, I am high on life, uh, and and crystal meth. Uh, no, but um, the. <laughs> The, no, I've never been this high. The the most the most high I've ever been. Uh, I had a little bit of weed in Amsterdam, and then I had the kind that like makes you paranoid. And then Lisa kept like try. We were navigating through a crowd trying to get to McDonald's. Uh, and, and, and again, don't judge <laughs> the me. Amsterdam, the Amsterdam, the Amsterdam experience. <laughs> and Lisa, uh, I, I don't know, Lisa, from your perspective. I don't know. I think you were just walking, but for me, you were bouncing around from like left shoulder to right shoulder in the back. And I could never <laughs> like keep track. So no, she was skipping. No, she was skipping right in front of you. She was literally doing. That. He was like, just stay on one side. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I wasn't. I was not in my best, my best, uh, charming, uh, cheerful self. That I was like, awesome. just, just stay on one side because I'm like flipping out. I know where she was. I was worried we were gonna have a taken situation. Um, and I was in no state to, I, I mean, I, what, what particular set of skills do I have? I'll just have a fucking, let's just start up a true crime podcast talking about it. I guess. I don't know what else, the fuck else I'm going to do. About lack, it. lack of spatial awareness. That's my real, <laughs> that's my real power. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it was God. <laughs> I was a mess still though. Didn't see colors. Uh, okay. All right. Well, then I, that's, <laughs> I think no one's going to beat that story. Uh yeah wow I did okay. g- I did giggle a lot walking through the red light district does that count for anything or the purple light district oh there's different lights I know Hey-o. I know what the different hey hey uh yeah so <laughs> uh so okay yeah so anyway so yes. yeah now we've caught him up and when this thing opens its weird mouth with like a thousand like of the flimsiest like plastic. Like it looks like they just broke a bunch of things off it's of like those plastic floss white picks. fork, <laughs> the, the you know, like a plastic white fork, and they just broke off the ends and just like stuck them haphazardly. This thing's mouth open. It's got like two blue candy canes in it, and then it's got like a million just like white spikes. Like they're supposed to be uh, teeth, I, and then like a weird like like Capri Sun juice straw shoots blue liquid directly into his brain. Uh, it's uh, impossible. Nate, you're to not. Describe. You're not even talking about the best part of this stupid fucking creature. Sorry, I know we're kind of bouncing around. This movie's batshit crazy anyway. So if you haven't watched it, it go no, watch it. Go nothing. Watch nothing it. we will describe will help you. But I go. Watch I'm sure. I'm. I'm sharing the screen now because I need y'all to see to witness <laughs> what the fuck are these eyes. <laughs> that is that is the most uns- <laughs> that is the most unsettling crack. part of all of this. Do you, is- do you know? Do you know what this face reminds me of? What? Um, the the uh, the Dudley guy from Queen's Gambit. Um, <laughs> whose eyes are so close together. And previous episode, I um, mean, devil what, all the time. What do you do with this thing? 
Like, <laughs> the eyes are, where? they're like slanted, like, like at a, like a, like a 45 degree angle. And they are comically close to each other, even for this kind of small head. The, you know, the mouth is like, thing. I mean, he's got like the Joker grin happening. here. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. I, it is incredible. I mean, Lisa, I mean, look at this. What is that's? Is, oh, I love it. I love it. It's so good. It has a brain. It has its own brain. It looks like it has like a like a like a head. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's go back to this 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 scene that we're trying to we've been trying to <laughs> been trying to get us through. So this scene, they walked off. Um, they walked off. Uh, I'm gonna leave that on there for y'all to watch, look at for the rest of the episode. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's not. Do no, uh, and, and I, I will. I will preface this. Uh, this. Um, this scene, uh, the 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 crew walked off the set, but they didn't want to be a part of it because it was so disturbing. So just just a preface for the scene. All right, Mitch, go ahead, get into it because I know you're you're dying to. Okay, so talk about they're this they're having a good time. You know, this is you know, I guess trying to say that when you're when you're high, you'll you'll meet with. Uh, uh, Loose morals, I guess, was the was the overall message. And uh, they're, knows, knows. they're in an alley, and they're you know he's he's found this girl and having a good time, and then she decides like he's he's about to pass out, and she is like, no, no, don't pass out. We're, we haven't had fun yet. And she starts to uh, go go down, and um, yeah, and then this thing busts out of the dude's pants and goes right into uh into her brain. Her mouth, it is into her through her mouth. Yeah. So it's it is a, it is, it is, it like is. A fellatio brain eat through the back of your mouth. Yeah, a lot of close-ups, a lot of very, I mean, practically uh like if you were colorblind, like I don't think you would. Yeah, this would look bad. <laughs> like there, I, the amount, the amount of like squelching sounds in this movie was too many. Oh, Lisa, talk there, there's a later scene that's worse, that's similar-ish, oh, actually. Yeah, but the oh, sound man. effects in this movie drove. I just, it was so bad. The sound effects. It was a lot of slurping, a lot of just slurpy. Yeah. It's admittedly Very, the creepiest part of this mm. movie. What, right. how bad it was well i mean just i mean it's it's the you know like nothing in this movie is overly scary but i think like it's the most unsettling part of this movie <laughs> no yeah yeah i guess yeah. i don't know i just thought the whole i don't know I just, <laughs> lasers so like let's, the whole thing so was let's, that's a great that's a great segue mitch is this unsuspecting victim friendly sure no problem is it a good movie to watch? No. <laughs> so can you handle it? Yeah, you can handle it. Don't worry about that. Do you want to? No. Unless, unless you are a longtime listener of the show and you liked such movies as Thanks Killing, then you this, maybe will love this one. This is better than that, right? This is better than Thanks Killing. Wow, that's saying a lot. I think for sure. That's right? saying oh, a no. lot. Oh no. Okay. Wow. I, I think they're on par. That's dang. That's okay. Big. Wow. All right. All right. We got we got a nice uh preview there. I think Lisa's um, trying to hedge her bet so she doesn't have to watch uh uh Frankenhooker. It's it, but if it's not, you have to watch Basket Case, his first movie. So you really you can't win. It's just, <laughs> it's a no win situation. What's uh, in the box? Uh, uh no. God. Um yeah, so that that death was disturbing. Um uh the other the other death that was really disturbing was toward the end was the makeout murder. That oh, was yeah, brutal, in the subway too. where you do get the basket case cameo, which I thought was yes, really cool. Yes, basket case cameo. And then that guy's like, peace out. You're too weird for me. Okay, which is that's saying the something. only the only part of the whole movie where I felt a tiny bit of emotion when he kept telling her, like, get away from me. Like, I'm yeah. going to kill. You need to get away from me. Get away. Get away. And she was just I was like, no, he she, he told you get away. And then that was sad to me. That was of all the deaths. That was the saddest 
That was the worst. It was almost comical because he would turn and then go blah, and then it would go back in his mouth and then it would turn and go blah. And then he was trying to fight it. Yes, it yes. Went. That was the only of yeah. the whole movie that scene was the most well done and the most sad. Cause like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Agree. yeah. It was good. It was good. It was this movie is surprisingly decent. There were some good laughs. Um, there was old people foaming at the mouth and then old people getting murdered and then old people choking to death. A weird talking parasitic slug that gives you drug brain juice. <laughs> I don't there's a lot going on in this movie. There was a naked buff guy for you, Lisa. There you go. See? See? Sure. See? No, see? See? There's something for everybody. Little, little something for everybody. A little something for everybody. Or a lot of something. Uh, yeah, I mean, the other deaths are kind of pedestrian, to be honest. Right? And those are the two. And they're, they're the most intimate, right? And the, just those people just die. And then the brain, I mean, it's like they're not skimping on brain matter in this movie. Like that was maybe most of the budget, right? Just like just like viscera coming out and just obviously gallons of blood everywhere. And it was pretty crazy. I, I think the scene that was cool is when he tries to detox, right? So he he's like, look, I'm killing people. I'm not remembering it because I'm high. I'm waking up and there's a bunch of blood in my underwear. That's not mine. <laughs> That's Never, Never good. That's yeah. that, that's like the hangover four where it gets real dark. Like this is not good. And then he goes into it like an old, it's like it was it's like a what is this like a 1930s play? He like sets up in a in a motel room and like you know, with like a white shirt, and he's just trying to like sweat it out. And uh he loses. And it, that I, I thought that 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 gave me a little bit of uh of an emotional response to Lisa, I think was that one. He, he tried to kick. He tried to kick it cold turkey, and then the guys just you know singing show tunes at him. They made up, which is one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my yeah. life, uh, with some of the worst lyrics I've ever. Um, speaking as someone who wrote a, a Jason X DMX uh, <laughs> uh, parody song, these are some bad lyrics. Uh, and then he finally gives in, you know, and, and, and murders someone. But he, he tried to fight it. I, I think that at least was. You know, showed that, that you know, I, he, he had just got off cocaine. So I think he had firsthand experience in writing some of these scenes. Yeah. Uh, and those are the ones that, that actually, you know, touch a little bit of the heart of uh, the story. But the rest is really people's brains just getting eaten. Um, and, and that continues. So that, that, the conversation on the subway with the ex girlfriend who slept with his brother and him being in the hotel room trying to kick it, his habit of, of, of uh, blue brain juice. Uh, we're probably like the only like actual plot points in the movie, really, or like act, you know, somewhat acting. The rest is just people's brains getting out and and old people trying to shoot guns at people. So, yeah. and so much brain. How much brain? I mean, they had like animal brains, and then people's brains getting eaten, and then there's like, yeah, and then there was a brain in like the uh, in the scene where they lift up like the the uh, the tray the top of the tray at the restaurant and like his brains bubbling up in his mind like she's like there's a lot of brain i mean it's got it's it's brain damage to be fair but man it's a lot of like outside of this guy's brains brains and it is it, yeah it's something yeah it's yeah not 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 like a not like an eating you don't want to be eating a lot during this movie ideally <laughs> Right, I mean a lot of like just brain bubbling. Like, yeah, I could do without that. I don't know. It's I don't know. I, I just talked a lot. I don't know. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I even, I'm on. We I'm like, on blue drugs right now. I don't even. Who oh even knows? God. Yeah. I, is there anything else with this movie? I anything else our listeners should know about? You know, if you if you saw this movie, then congratulations. Uh, your life is enriched. If you didn't see this movie, like, <laughs> what you know? If you. <laughs> What else would you, I mean, what would you tell someone who's, who's on the fence? And maybe this is more of a question for Lisa. Um, you know, I, I think if you're a horror movie fan, I think if you're a horror movie fan, you probably don't need a whole lot of convincing to watch this film, but you know, if you're the not, 80s, 80s sleazy New York brain eater, what do you, what do you, yeah. What do I tell them? 
If they're on the fence, I mean, if you got 84 minutes to kill, go for it. <laughs> you know, that's fair. I think I said that one. If you have too. a life and you have children to take care of and limited free time, I would not recommend putting it on the list. <laughs> okay. Interesting. All right, well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, I think, I think this movie is. Yeah, I think you have to. I think the 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 right person for this movie is definitely someone that a if you like campy, lower budget, weird like weird like eight like the eighties era horror films and stuff. Like if you like things like anything from Troma, this is right up your alley. Um, this is a little better than that. I think. it's better. Don't get me wrong. I just I just mean yeah. it, but it's it's that same sort of like kind of grimy like to your point that kind of grimy gross feel grimy it yeah. is grime city yeah, yeah. for yeah, sure it is it is it is grimes uh but <laughs> it's uh, grimes yes <laughs> no but um yeah I, I i don't know that there's a whole lot to say about it uh you know uh i i you know what i think we'll we'll let the man say it best cocaine is a hell of a drug <laughs> that's that's what we're in <laughs> Let's get into uh, the final cut. Final cut. <laughs> Nate, I'd like you to go first. You're you're probably gonna have the. My guess is you're gonna have the higher score. I you are be guessing correct. Um. Yeah. This movie, it's got. It's so it's so low budget. It was so low budget. They got one permit. That was the film in the subway. And they couldn't film, they couldn't have more than one set up at one time. So they, they filmed everything for that thing that broke down the set and then rebuilt the set. <laughs> There's no going back. Original cut, Lisa, I know you'd be excited to hear. 66 minutes. Oh, why couldn't we have watched that one? But, <laughs> but not feature length. So I had to pad it up with another 18 minutes. Hence, wait, back it up, Nate. So this <laughs> actually came out in a theater. Uh, or you have so. to have that to even get it on VHS. I mean, it played in some theaters. This is the name, oh right? Gosh. I mean, you could play like a couple of theaters or whatever. Um, but it wasn't feature length, so got it up to that 84, that tight 84. Um, hence, a lot of weird after the fact effects, a lot of you know, extra screaming scenes. A lot of weird cut togethers uh, that explains some of the uh, <laughs> that 18 minute time. Um, that said, this movie's great. Uh, it is 80s sleazy, trashy, but it's not too sleazy. Right. It walks a nice line for me. Too sleazy. Uh, you know, that's a little much for like a maniac. I'm, I'm a little bit less on a maniac than I am on this kind of movie. No, but- um, so, I mean, I kind of liked it. Uh, I'm gonna watch it again. Might get the Blu-ray. This is a this is a six out of ten blue juices for me. Six out of ten. I li- I enjoyed watching it. I I liked it. I laughed. I did not cry. Uh, I saw weird effects, and I saw an old man crush a centuries old parasitic singing leech thing into a bloody pulp. So I can't really complain about any of it. There you go. Lisa, what what, what are you going to give this as your final cut? I got distracted. What did Nate give it? <laughs> a six, six out of ten. So you got you to beat six? that. Seven? Eight? What are you, what are you thinking? Oh my what gosh. Are you, what are you thinking? Oh my god. Oh, six. Mitch, what are you gonna give? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it the score. I'm gonna give it, Lisa. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking through. Uh, there's. There's a. Okay. I guess. And this is a six point six in IMDb, by the way. Oh, so I'll let you know that. Okay. It sure. is. It is. Sure. No, I believe you. I don't not believe you. I just can't believe people read it. That <laughs> <time>. <laughs> Oh, Fair. There's a lot of weird people in this world. Um, I'm going to give it a three. Only because of a few things. 
I did like the scene on the subway where he's like, that was like the only good scene where it like it kept popping out and he was like trying to hold it back. Um, I did like the Kevin Klein voiceover voice. Okay, that so that was that was appealing. Yeah, I liked it. Okay. I liked I liked it for his voice. It could have been annoying. He was the least annoying voice in the whole movie <laughs> to me. <laughs> um that was not designed. And it to was that way. and it was and it was a pretty short movie. I didn't have to put up with it for two. Okay, long. that's at that's one always, point. That's, that's, always, always, right? that's, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. Three out uh, of ten. I, I got a three and a six. Three out of ten what? Sorry, three out of ten what? Sorry. Uh three out of ten buckets of blue Gatorade. There's a lot of blue Gatorade poured into a corner of a room just for no reason. For zero reason. Zero reason. The reason was I need to get to 84 minutes. So yeah. All right, Mitch. Six, three, three, six mafia right now. What do you got? Three. Oh my God. I've gone, I don't know. I've I've gone a little bit back and forth. I actually, I think look, we've we've talked about other movies that you know, uh, particularly the um, uh, the the purge movies that like beat you over the head with their metaphor, uh, but they you know, oftentimes it's not because they want to make sure you understand it. It it's it's to me it's like they beat you over the head with it because they're trying to prove like how how smart and clever they are. You know, it's you know like oh do you, do you get it right? Like you understand we're doing you know. Versus this, I think he he literally was trying to explain the experience of what it's like to be on cocaine and 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 coming off it. I mean, it, it, to be fair, it does it, it it does come off a little bit uh, after school, especially and <laughs> in some it does. cases, it does. Um, There's like a one block of dialogue when she like walks in about like how like you know she, he's affected her so much, and she just talks for like three pages of dialogue like it's just incre- incredible like yeah it's ugh. but even ugh. even even then i do think this this came from a, a is a little more earnest than some of those right um i i, I do think that like i don't know i i'm sure he probably grappled with like okay what, what's the white ray to to frame some of the stuff you know like today if you were doing like a movie but you're coming off drug experience it's probably a lot darker and shit right because <laughs> that's that's the kind of movies that come out now um, I this movie's really weird. I I think y'all hit. I think you both kind of hit the good things and the bad things. I'm man. I'm I'm gonna give this. Oh god, a five out of ten. Uh, I don't even know what what do you call the five out of ten like leech unicorns? Because that's what it looked like when they was like trying to like gnaw through the dude's skull from the front. Oh yeah, so then. The thing jizzed like all of its blue drug juice into his head, and then that he tried to shoot himself in the head because it was a, I think a new one was getting regenerated. Yeah. There's so much juice that like turned his brain into the thing. Well, I was even talking then about that. Then he shot himself, and then it was like it was like a huge light was coming out of his head. I mean, yeah. What I, I wasn't Incredible. even talking about that. I was talking about like there's a couple times, a couple of kill seats where like Elmer's trying to like eat through the guys like forehead and they're just like shaking him off a whole bunch but it's it's just he's just elmer sticking out like a like a like a unicorn horn there and they're just they're just head banging it kind of reminded me of the grandpa from texas chainsaw massacre a little bit like needs a lot of setup and help to like get the kills you know what i mean like they're like like they're like him getting them on the face like he's like them holding the hammer for the grandpa right like it's like get like 95% of the way there and then you just suck as hard as you can. Like that was, that was the whole setup, but it was something. Oh, what a movie. It's, Lisa, it's more something. like this, less like this. What do you think? No, thank you. <laughs> well, join us next week when we watch uh Frank and hooker. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know what our next movie is. We have, what to, was I think- your number, Mitch? What was your number that I had to, Lisa, you're our unsuspecting victim. The number was one. <laughs> oh, I don't know if Lisa can even give a one anymore. Like it'd have to be something rough for no. a one. Yeah. No. Lisa, Lisa's hardened. Uh I right, know. Lisa? I, I mean, 
Who you've been like, yes. Lisa, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought you would have watched this movie. Like, I don't even know that I could have ever talked you into it before this podcast. So, look, if you if you truly, if you out there, listener, are a horror fan and you have a unsuspecting victim in your life, just start a podcast. Uh, you know, and <laughs> during a podcast, get, you can get anyone to do whatever you want. Basically. Oh my gosh. I thought you were going to say, say thank you to your unsuspecting victim <laughs> friends. No, instead you say start a podcast. Wow. Well, I took it a different direction on that one. I just want to let you know, Lisa, that you gave <laughs> Thanks Killing a one and this a three. So this is three times as good as Thanks Killing. So. Just wanted to let you know that. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, no, of course, say thank you to your unsuspecting victims. Uh, you know, we look our horror, horror is fun, but you know, we all know sometimes it's a little more fun as we get into the, uh, the holiday season, you know, it's always more fun to, um, watch people who actually do get scared or, or uh, some of this, yeah. some, you know, sometimes we all have that one horror fan friend. That's like, gets a little too into the, like all the, all the murders and stuff. And you're like, okay, you calm down, brother. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, be, be, be kind to all your all your both pro horror and unsuspecting victim friends. Nate, where can everyone find us? Well, actually, this you know, I just thought of it. You know, October is the month where we make everyone watch, you know, horror movies. Maybe November is unsuspecting victim appreciation month. Maybe that's maybe that's oh, what do you think about yeah. that, Lisa? Oh, well, that there, sounds right. great. There we go. See? That maybe we can we can make that an official official title and watch. Maybe that's Lisa, that's when you get to watch. You get to pick a non-horror movie. How about that? Sounds good. All right. I think we did it. it. And you want to you want to hear more amazing problem solving at TX Pod Massacre on Twitter, Texas Podcast Massacre on Facebook and Instagram. Look, give us those five star reviews or a cost Mitch in person to get brain damage on the podcast. It is possible. <laughs> I thought you were gonna leave uh, it just to get brain damage. I was like, what? <laughs> no, brain damage. <laughs> On the podcast. Uh, hey, give us a call. 346-246-3143. Let us know what you thought about brain damage. Let us know when you want Gretel and Hansel to be on the list. Uh, Mitch is still clamoring. And it has not happened yet. Um, yeah, October's coming up. We've actually seen a bunch of movies in the theater recently. Um, we should probably do like an episode about those and maybe about some Fantastic Fest movies that we've seen we can give you the heads up on what's coming out uh, what you'll see on shutter later in the year what you'll see other way, other places so it might be a it might be a, a, a an episode movie bonanza uh planning that so get excited yeah. and mitch has got a spreadsheet of all the movies he's very pumped um we're seeing a car sex movie everything's great best time of the year i hope everyone's having a great time <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, look at your look for your local car sex movie uh, viewing location near you. Oh, if you could watch it in a drive-in, is that the best way to experience that movie? Probably. No. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I want yes, to. Yes, it is. Are in we? A drive oh God, Nate, are we going to a drive-thru? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think what, that's what playing. Did we I don't think that's playing at the drive-in. I don't think. I don't think so. You're you're about to call them to ask, aren't you? Like, hey, have y'all <laughs> tell, just just call the drive through place? And be like, hey, I know y'all love cars and movies. Check this, this one. Out. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at the how showboat much, how the showboat drive in right now. I'm looking at it. I'm how much it. do you do you like? How much do you love cars? Is they're only playing question. Marvel's Shang Chi and Free Guy. So down down grade. well they uh, okay well, we still got a, we still got a to week to be fair they only release it for the week it, it doesn't matter this is very local stuff no one outside of houston cares about <laughs> um, support uh, your local driver just call your place just ask hey how much do you really love cars that's how you get your uh, other unsuspecting victim like prove how much you love cars do you love cars more than this person in this movie go and find out yeah uh once again lisa thank you so much for 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 everything you do but of course for sticking through this one uh thank you all very much out there for listening uh from all of us here at texas podcast massacre thank you so much and just keep telling yourself it's only a movie good night